Hello everyone, Christina here. Welcome to another mail call video. This is for the month of June, 2020. Apologize for getting this up a little late. Um, before I get into showing you the cards that were sent to me for June's theme, which was ink blending, wanted to give you guys um, a heads up that in this video, you will be seeing some cards that were for previous months. Um, I came across a bundle of envelopes that I think were mailed in April. I'm not entirely sure how <laughs> they got misplaced, but I did find them. And so I'm going to be including them in today's video. So anyway, that now that that's out of the way, um, for those of you who are new, mail call is sort of a thing I do on my YouTube channel and blog where I invite all of you to create a card based on a theme for the month. You mail them in and then we get to see everyone's cards all together in one video. It's a really fun way to see what the community is making and get some really fun ideas, especially for June's theme, which was ink blending, like I mentioned previously. So um, like I've done in the past, I'm going to be spotlighting some cards that stood out to me as I was opening the mail. I'm going to talk through them and uh, give you an idea of why I wanted to spotlight the cards. And then I'm going to be showing you all of the cards that I received over the month. So here we go. This first, um, it's actually two cards. They're both from Roberta Wynn in Northern California. And look how cute this is. She created a card based on my Mickey Mouse mail art with the ink blending. She did her own version. I thought that was so cute. And then she also has this fun B card that opens up at the top like this. I thought that was so cute. I loved this, how she did this ink blending all, all over here. I thought that was really fun. All right, I think this is the only kid card that I received for June, I think. This is from Allison in California. And I love how she did all these this ink blending to create the layers and the ocean and the sand down below. Such a cute card. Love that. So Allison. This next card is from Holly in Kentucky. And I really love this one. Look what she did. She ink blended a background and then die cut it and then assembled all the die cut pieces together. So uh, you can see that dimension there a little bit. Um, I thought it was really creative how she did that. And then I believe, I believe this is also, let me see if this is Holly. Yeah, this is, this is the same Holly. Um, this is a card that was for April, but it was most misplaced in the mail. But I wanted to show this one to you guys because it's an unusual shape for a card. And how she did this, I'm assuming, is she die cut, you know, this shape um, with a die and then preserve the fold. I thought that's such a fun way to create a card and I like the different shape. I thought it was really creative. All right, here's an idea for ink blending. And this is from Molly in Kansas. And this is where she did a whole ink blended background and then put a die cut pattern over the top. I don't know if you guys can see that, but it is paper right over the top. I thought that was a really fun and creative way to use an ink blended background. This one is from Yvette in California. And this is, I like this one, it's really fun because she did the ink blending and then did a background over the top and heat embossed it. So I don't know if you guys can see that, but there's a little bit of a shine and sheen to the white pattern on top. It's another fun way to use those ink blended backgrounds. Here's another ink blending idea from Jody in New York. I like how she masked off this area and did ink blending in the center and then had the, the cat stamped over the edge. So this is an example of masking a shape with ink blending. This next card from Elise in Arizona is a good example of using ink blending for a scene, which is really similar to the card I showed you earlier, making an ocean scene right here. Um, I like how she has this large section of ocean blending up, and then she's also done some blending at the top to create the clouds. Just is so fun, and it's a great way to build a seat. This is a really great example of using layered masks, or even like a stencil, to create some ink blending. So in this case, let me get out her info. This is from Louisa in California, and she's done different segments of this like curvy line, and changed the color as she blended down. Or actually, probably blended from the bottom now that I look at it. 
But this is a great example of what you can do with different stages or different layers of masking or stenciling. All right, this card is from Barb in Missouri. And I thought this was a great example of ink blending. Well, for, and for a couple different techniques, she's got an embossed pattern here or embossed images. So she's ink blended over the top and it has the embossed resist. But also she's blending from one like point and it kind of fades out. It go, goes to a a nice clean white as it fades. It's sort of like a glowing ink blended effect. All right, this card is from Mary Lynn in Washington. This is a great example of using a stencil for layering or for ink blending, not layering, for ink blending. She's used a stencil and ink blended from the center, changing the colors in sort of a radiating pattern. It's really beautiful and nice sharp edges from that stencil. Here's a card from Marcy in California, and on the back she notes that she used a technique from Mindy Egan's YouTube video, um, water stamping using stencils. So this is, um, I'm assuming she did some ink blending and then used a stencil with water to get some resist, so probably um, distress inks. And then, as we know, when you re-wet distress inks, like we are wetting it with a stencil, it kind of almost bleaches the color. So that's how she got this this uh, pattern in the background. It looks really, really neat. These two cards both use sort of that radiating ink blending idea that I shared earlier. Um, this one is from Trisha in Massachusetts. I like how it kind of creates the, the sun and the, um, the whole sky kind of radiating out from that area. And then here's a different take on it. This one is from Lana or Lena in California. And with this one, she used it as a background in front of this big die cut and it creates that glowing effect. So this is, these are two examples of blending from a center area outward. This card and envelope set is from Ginger in Oregon. She notes on the back that this is a card inspired by a card that she saw in Summer Card Camp. And I wanted to highlight this one because it's a good example of ink blending with the background and then stamping over the top with a pattern. It's a great way to mix up your ink blending. And she also stamped a liner to go inside her envelope, which is really fun. This card is from Kevin Bray. I think I've spotlighted his cards in the past. I thought this was a really great example of using smaller sections of ink blending um, sort of to highlight a section of the card. So he's die cut these circles, created smaller scenes within each one. And so there's just a little bit of ink blending. It's also a really great example of ink blending to create a galaxy or star scene. So just some different pockets of colors with some white, looks like paint, gouache or something splattered on top. Really, really fun card. This card is from Gwen in New Jersey, and this is a good example of taking like a blended piece and cutting it into strips and then adhering it. So you're creating smaller sections and then gluing them together. I thought that was really creative. And then this last one is from Raylene in Idaho, and um, she said that she created this with alcohol inks, so it wasn't necessarily ink blending, but I did want to highlight it because it was just so beautiful and I love all the purple in it. I thought it was really pretty. She's got like this, um, I think it's a chipboard piece right on top, added a little bit of shimmer to that. Hopefully the camera will pick that up. Just a beautiful card in general. Okay, so those are all of the cards I wanted to point out with different types of ink blending. Now I'm going to be showing you the rest of the cards that I received, plus those few cards that kind of trickled in late or were some, somehow mysteriously misplaced. I'm so glad I found those. I know a few of you were wondering where your cards had run off to. So anyway, here we go. Let's jump into the rest of the cards.
Thank you guys so much for participating in mail call and watching and seeing what people are creating. If you would like to participate in future mail call um, videos like this, I have information listed down below in the video description or over at my blog. You can keep sending in those cards for the rest of the year. Thanks so much for watching. On screen, I'm gonna put some uh, links to previous mail call videos so you can get some other ideas. Thank you so much for watching today. I will be back very soon with another card video.